apply aspects of the ecg in that first we talk regarding the arrhythmias arrhythmias when the normal rhythm of the heart is disturbed normal rhythm is disturbed means the there are some problems of impulse generation problems with the impulse conduction problems with the impulse generation if there is a problem in the atria there are atrial arrhythmias problem in the ventricular there are ventricular arrhythmias and if there is a problem in the impulse conduction there is the conduction blockages so first we see what are the blockages what are the different blockages and then we see what are the atrial problems and ventricular problems so heart blocks is divided into two types when there is a constant pr interval and variable pr interval the pr interval is normal pr interval is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds 0.12 to 0.20 seconds if that interval is more than 0.20 seconds okay then we call as the heart blockages so if that interval is a constant in ecg that is called the first degree heart block If that interval is variable, then we call it the second degree heart block. Okay, first degree when the PR interval is more than 0.20 second, but that interval is constant. Then first degree. variable PR interval is again more than 0.20 second, but that interval is increasing. Then it's called second degree heart type one heart block. Second degree type one heart blocks. Second degree type two. Second degree type one is called Wenke Wenke backs. Second degree type two is called Mobis type two. Uh, in this where the pr interval is a constant okay pr interval is constant means certain impulses cannot get conducted through the av node and third degree heart block where there is no association between atria and ventricle both are contacting at their own rate that is called the third degree heart block so heart blocks when there is a constant pr interval that is the first degree heart block when the pr interval is more than 0.20 seconds okay and that is Mobis type 2, second degree heart block when certain impulses cannot get passed through the uh, AV node. In variable PR interval, type 1, that is Wenkin batch, the PR interval get prolonged, 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 and with the one bit drops, that is Wenkin max. And third degree heart block when there is no association between atria and ventricle. Atria contact at their own rate, ventricle contact at their own rate. So now we are here the first degree heart block. Okay, that we already told P, uh, in first degree heart block the PR interval is more than 0.20 seconds. The PR interval is more than 0.20 seconds and these interval is a constant. If you see the ECG, the PR interval is more than 0.20 seconds. Okay. But the rest of the rhythm is regular. Means every QRS complex is followed by the P wave. Every P wave is followed by the QRS complex or every, every QRS wave is preceded by the P wave. Okay and qrs complex are usually normal that is the first degree first degree only the pr interval is more than 0.20 seconds if you see the pr interval is more than 0.20 seconds it is a first degree heart block then second degree heart block that is mobis type 1 then second degree heart block that is mobis type 1 you have Successively longer PR interval, that is one QRS fails. Okay. This is called Wenkin back problem. Means longer, longer, longer PR interval. See this. In this PR interval longer, PR interval longer till PR interval again more longer till you see the one P wave with no QRS complex. So one QRS complex fails. Okay, this is called Wenke backs. This pattern is called Wenke backs. Movies type one. Longer, 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 longer. Drop. Rhythm ventricular is often irregular. Atrial rhythm is irregular. QRS is normal. Still, QRS is normal. Only thing is that in second degree type one, PR interval prolongs, prolongs, prolongs. Still, there is QRS complex fails to appear. Okay. This is the second degree heart block. Movies type one. In Mobis type 2, uh, in Mobis type 2, that is what happened. 
the PR interval is constant actually. Okay, it's more than 0.20 seconds. Okay, PR interval is more than 0.20 seconds. P waves are punctual and similar, unlike a non-conducted uh, uh, the. So PRS interval is prolonged, Q, QRS complexes are often abnormal and you find the there is a blockages okay you see this, this, these are the, the three uh, QRS complex with there is one drop pitch okay so in this uh, they say that the PR interval is prolonged or sometimes normal with a suddenly dropped QRS complexes. Okay, with suddenly dropped QRS complexes. This is the OBS type 2. So, in first degree, all P waves are followed by the QRS complex. The only thing that PR interval is more than 0.2 seconds. In uh, second degree heart block, that is OBS type 1. PR interval prolong, prolong, prolong till one beat is dropped. One QRS complex fails to appear. That is the Mobius type 1. In AV block, that is Mobius type 2, the PR interval might be constant with, with suddenly dropped QRS complexes. Okay. And in third degree heart block, atria and ventricles are depolarizing independently. No association between atria and ventricles. You see that. There are certainly P waves are quite more double to that of the QRS complexes. Okay. So, heart blocks divided into first degree, second degree and third degree. In first degree, only thing is that the PR interval is prolonged. Normal PR interval should be 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. If the PR interval is more than 0.20 seconds, that is a first degree heart block. In secondary, second degree heart block, that is Mobius type 1. In second degree heart block, that is Mobius type 1, the what will happen? The PR interval prolong, prolong, prolong till one beat is dropped. One beat is dropped. Okay. So, successively longer PR intervals until one QRS fails. This is the Mobius type 1. Okay. In Mobius type 2, Mobius type 2, what will happen? The PR interval is prolonged or might be constant and there is a fixed pattern of droppage of QRS complex. After every two P waves, one, uh, every two waves is followed by one QRS complex or every three P waves is followed by the QRS complex, uh, one QRS complex. So there is a pattern is fixed. You, you see there is suddenly drops. So uh, two is to one, three is to one. So that is the pattern, okay. And in third degree heart block, there is a complete dissociation between atria and ventricle. That is, atria and ventricles are depolarizing independently. There is no association between atria and ventricles. So there is no association between atria and ventricles. So there is one poem associated with heart block. If the R is far from the P, you see the R and P, if those are far from, then you have first degree. Okay. Yes, you have R wave, you should have the P wave, but if there is they are far, the first degree. Longer, longer, longer drop, then you have Venky bags. Miss P and R wave should be in each uh, successive waves. P and R distance become longer, longer, longer till drop. Then it is a Wenke wax. If some P waves don't get through, then you have Mobius type 2. If some P waves don't get through, then you have a Mobius type 2. If some P waves don't get through, then you have OBS type 2. You see that 
if this is one p wave it is followed by qrs only another p wave is followed by qrs only but this p wave is not followed by the qrs only so this is second degree hot block second degree hot block so some p waves don't get through then you have the mobius type one and if p and q waves don't agree then you have a third degree then you see that P waves and Q waves, there is no pattern. This is a P wave, this QR is complex, P wave, no QR is complex. So this is P waves, con atrials contacting their own, ventricles contacting their own. Then this is the third degree. So if you see in an ECG in P and R wave distance is far, then you have the first degree. Longer, longer, longer drop, then you have Venky backs. P and R wave, longer, 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 longer. Then you have Venky wax. If some P waves don't get through, then you have Mobius type. If some P waves don't get through, then you have Mobius type. And if P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a 30. If P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a 30. Degree. Now we talk with the atrial arrhythmias. Okay, in atrial arrhythmias, you have the atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. Okay, atrial fibrillation occurs when action potential fire very rapidly within the pulmonary veins or atrium in a chaotic manner. There is, this result is a very fast atrial rate, about 400 to 600 beats per minute, because atrial rate is so fast and the action potential pulse are of such a low amplitude, P waves will not be seen on the ECG in patients with atrial fibrillation. Atria, there is a chaotic rhythm, okay. Pumping will not be fit, only the chaotic rhythm, okay. Uh, the flicker of contraction you see there. So, there you will not see any P wave in the ECG, only what you see the, the fibrillatory waves instead of the P wave. So, at times, the P wave activity may be observed as a coarse fibrillatory waves and the term coarse atrial fibrillation is used though there is no clinical significance to this finding. At times the P wave activity may be observed as a coarse fibrillatory waves and the term coarse atrial fibrillation is used though there is no clinical significance to this finding. The atrial action potential all attempt to conduct through the atrial ventricular node. However, the AV node becomes intermittently refractory and will only allow a certain number of atrial action potential to reach the ventricles. This is the reason the ventricular rate is not also 400 to 600 beats per minute, but rather around 100 to 200 beats per minute. So, so in atrial fibrillation, the atrial rate is quite high, 400 to 600 ventricular rate is not as much high as to that arterial rate because the AV node becomes intermittently refractory and will only allow a certain number of atrial action potentials to reach the ventricles. This is the reason the ventricular rate is not also 400 to 600 beats per minute but rather around 100 to 200 beats per minute. The only two other rhythms that are irregularly irregular are atrial flutter with variable conduction and multiplocal atrial tachycardia or multiplocal atrial tachycardia. Atrial flutter has a typical sawtooth pattern whereas the multiplocal atrial tachycardia requires three distinct P wave morphologies in one 12 lead ECG tracing. Note that there are a quite a few arrhythmias that are regularly irregular such as second degree AV block type 1, Venky backs. So, ECG showing atrial fibrillation will have no visible P waves and an irregularly irregular QRS complexes. The ventricular rate is frequently fast unless the patient is on heavy nodal blocking drugs such as beta blockers or non tadroparidin calcium channel blockers. Fibrillatory waves may or may not be detected. So this is atrial fibrillation you see. There are the QRS complex you can see, but no typical P wave is a fine fibrillation. Okay. 
no discernible p waves multiple foci rapidly discharging no organized electrical activity in rta rhythm is irregular atrial fibrillation control rate is less than 100 beats per minute atrial fibrillation uncontrolled rate is more than 100 beats per minute so atrial fibrillation is controlled rate is less than 100 beats per minute atrial fibrillation is uncontrolled rate is more than 100 beats per minute so no p waves multiple flow rapidly discharging no organized electrical activity atria rhythm is irregular atrial fibrillation control rate is less than 100 atrial fibrillation uncontrolled rate is more than 100 atrial flutter with 3 3 to 1 atrial ventricular conduction rapid identical undulating waves people flutter waves call f yeah, for flutter waves sawtooth or undulating appearance sawtooth or undulating appearances flutter waves to qrs ratio okay pr interval indeterminate qrs complex are normal no p waves instead of there is a flutter waves okay and rhythm is regular or irregular Now we go for the ventricular arrhythmias. So ventricular arrhythmias. So uh, before going to ventricular, starting with the ventricular arrhythmia, there are arterial arrhythmia, there is arterial fibrillation and arterial flutter. So both in arterial flutter, arterial fibrillation, you don't find any P waves. Uh, in flutter, there is a F wave, and in fibrillation, flutter waves. Okay. The ventricular arrhythmias are abnormal heart rhythms that make the lower chambers of your heart, which instead of pump ventricular arrhythmias are abnormal heart rhythms that make the lower chambers of your heart which instead of pump so in ventricular fibrillation you see there is a completely disorganized pattern Immediate cessation of cardiac output, no associated pulse. So when there is a ventricular fibrillation, you don't find any pulse because heart pumping is not there. Yes, effective pumping. No discernible P waves, QRS complexes, or T waves. Incompatible with life. This is the incompatible with life. Ventricular tachycardia, AV dissociation, QRS complex are there should be more than 120 milliseconds, wide complexes, rate is more than 100, typically 150 to 200, there is a fusion of beats, okay. So in ventricular tachycardia, note the In tachycardia, the uh, rate is 150 to 250. In bradycardia, rate is less than 60. In atrial flutter, 200 to 350. In fibrillation, more than 350. In ventricular fibrillation, there is a chaotic rhythm and rate. You see, there's ventricular fibrillation, there is a chaotic rhythm and rate. So, ventricular fibrillation, there is a chaos, chaotic ventricular defibrillation. Rapid, wide, irregular ventricular complexes. Rapid, wide, and irregular ventricular complexes. Rapid, wide, irregular ventricular complexes. In ventricular tachycardia, impulses originate at ventricular pacemaker. In ventricular tachycardia, impulses originate at ventricular pacemaker. So, okay. Wide ventricular complexes, the rate is more than 120 per minute. So, wide ventricular complexes, the rate is more than 120 per minute. So, wide ventricular complexes, the rate is more than 120 per minute. See, it's ventricular tachycardia, impulse originate at ventricular pacemaker. Wide ventricular complexes, the rate is more than 120 
family. Ventricular complexes are white, the rate is more than 120 per minute. This is the ventricular tachycardia. So you see wide ventricular complexes. This is ventricular tachycardia. And chaotic ventricular deformation. This is a rapid wide irregular ventricular complexes. This is the ventricular fibrillation. So summarizing what we have learned, we have learned the arrhythmias when there is a conduction blockages. First degree heart block, second degree heart block, third degree heart block. First degree, there is a PR interval is longer. In second degree, in uh, Venky patch, longer, longer, longer till one QRS complex is dropped. In uh, second degree, type 2, that is movies type 2, the there is a fixed uh, pattern of uh, blockages. Okay. Then in third degree heart block, there is no association between atrial and ventricles. Atrial and ventricles, they are totally dissociated. Atrial contacts at their own rate, ventricle contracting at their own rate. Okay. Now, in atrial arrhythmias and ventricular arrhythmias, in atrial arrhythmias, there is atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. In ventricular arrhythmias and atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, there is no P wave actually, only the QRS complexes you see. In arterial fibrillation, the rate is quite high actually, something 400 to 600. In fibrillator, the rate is something 300 to 400. So, in fibrillation, there is a fibrillatory wave, in flutter, there is a F waves. And then, but in both, you can see the QRS complexes. Okay. And in ventricular uh, tachycardia, the, the rate is more than 120 beats per minute. There is wide QRS complexes. Okay. Wide QRS complexes. Rate is more. In uh, ventricular uh, flutter, you find uh, the uh, rate is uh, more but something up to 300 to 400 and uh, ventricular fibrillation there is a chaotic pattern okay uh, you don't find any pulse and there is a fibrillatory waves okay that's with these the arrhythmias